Hey everyone, welcome to a new video and happy dark sky week. I am out here at the Wilderness State Park up by Mackinac City. I took the big plunge on driving up here and I'm after one of the hardest landscape astrophotography shots to get. And what that shot is, is that is a double Milky Way arch. And the only way to get this shot is either in the month of March or in the month of April. And what you have to do is in the very beginning uh, of the day after sunset, uh, and once darkness fully hits, you take a full 180 degree winter Milky Way panorama arch. And then right before sunrise, you take a 180 degree Milky Way arch of the spring Milky Way and then you take a 360 degree shot of your foreground and you have an eastern, a north, uh, a north, west, south winter Milky Way and a north, east, south spring Milky Way. So you have a full flat 360 with the winter Milky Way here and then the spring Milky Way here or summer Milky Way, whatever you want to call it. So it is one of the, it's in my opinion, the most challenging landscape astrophotography shot to get, not only because of the editing involved, but also because of the conditions that you have to have. You only get two months to do this. You have to have the perfect weather. You have to have virtually no clouds right at sunset. And you also have to have no clouds at uh, sunrise. And particularly here in Michigan, which is, I believe, the seventh cloudiest state in the US, it makes it even more challenging to do. So let's get to scouting some compositions for this full 360 foreground. Well, I found this really nice little pond here. There's quite a few of them everywhere. Quite a few of them everywhere. <laughs> um, but this one in particular, I'm noticing the wind is not affecting as much as all the other ones. So I'm hoping that I might be able to get a really nice reflection here. In maybe particular, if I wanna take some single shots while my Benro Polaris is kind of doing its thing with the panoramas uh, with the camera that I'm filming on right now. So first things first, like in every uh, location I go to, when I'm planning this shot, I wanna to go to photo pills and I wanna just make sure I know exactly where the Milky Way is gonna be aligning uh, for the night. I've, I have been here before, so I'm pretty sure the Milky Way is gonna rise right over there. But let's see. Okay, so let's align it. We're gonna hit visual calibration. Since the sun is up, let's align it to that. Looks pretty perfect to me. So what we're gonna check, yeah, look at that. Perfect. So I will be able to go somewhere over here. They're probably more so over here, right at the end of this puddle. I don't know if you can see me in frame, but right at the end of the puddle over here. Uh, or I could always walk in here. I don't have super high boots on and it's very muddy here. Um, but maybe I could go out on the rocks over there, get a reflection of in there of the Milky Way rising. That really sounds nice. So here we are. This is at 430, which is actually about approximately when I want to start taking the panorama, maybe a little bit early. I'll start at a higher row. I'll go across. That should take some time. And then by that time, the Milky Way will be a little bit higher. And then I'll start taking the shots for the second row down below. So let's see what my composition is. Let's just keep looking around. In fact, there is another gentleman here. Looks like he's fishing. So let's go talk to him. There's another nice pond that I could get some nice reflection in. What I'm liking over here too is really liking these kind of dead trees in the middle here. I'm thinking about going in the middle for my, maybe my foreground. And I might move to take my actual panorama of the sky itself and I'll make sure that everything's aligned properly. Because what one thing I'm trying to keep aware of is my horizon line and the subjects of the foreground that will be in the way of the sky above the horizon line. So I'm gonna try to mitigate that if I can. 
but uh, we'll see because I'm not sure what lens I'm going to use tonight. I actually rented some lens from lensrentals.com. This is not a sponsored ad, unfortunately. <laughs> but we uh, rented the Canon uh, 24 to 70 2.8. And I also rented the Sigma 28 1.4, which I own, that is currently in for repair because that lens is just that good. I really wanted to have it. So I'm excited to test out the capabilities of the Canon one, because honestly, I would really like a 2.8 lens. That's like a variable. Uh, and 20, the 24 to 70 range is really versatile that you can do so much photography with. So I really hope that it performs well open at 2.8 because if it doesn't, I'm going to be sad. I'm actually rather liking this spot right here. I don't know. There's something about the dead trees that's just really calling out to me. I like the rocks here. And I really like that the Milky Way is over here and I have this really nice open area for the core to be. But there's just something about all the dead trees over there that I think is going to make a more compelling foreground rather than just the rocks. So there's one more spot over here. Let's go check it out. All right. Wind is definitely getting to my hands. I don't have any gloves on right now. They're just in the car. But uh, yeah, the wind is pretty chilly but it's honestly pretty warm out, it's kind of nice. So I think, ah, this is so hard. Okay, so there's, to me, when I think of this particular state park, it's the name is Wilderness State Park. So the three main things here to me is the lush open field here, the dead, dead trees kind of everywhere, we have all these little pools of water over here and Lake Michigan and yeah, that's the Lake Michigan. So those are like the four main elements, the field, the dead trees, the puddles and the big lake. So if I'm trying to tell the story of the image of this park, I want to try to incorporate all of those elements to some degree. I'm really liking this dead tree for two reasons. One, it kind of fills this negative space above the horizon, uh, underneath the arch of the spring Milky Way. I got this nice big rock here that I can like sit on. I can superimpose myself um, for the, or I can sit here on the foreground shot and I can turn my flash on um, and give myself a nice personal touch and incorporate myself into the image. I really like that idea but I'm missing the puddles, I'm missing the lake. So, I'm liking over there more. Now that I talk to the camera, I talk to you guys, I, uh, I'm selling myself on that, on that spot over there. So, I guess let's go back or let's keep looking. Still got some time. So, my microphone died that was plugged into the camera. So I walked to the end of the area and it was really, really flooded. And if you check out my other video that I will link here up in the corner, there was nowhere near any of this water. And you can see the beautiful golden light of golden hour just all over this area. And I really, really liked this area here, but it just unfortunately didn't make the cut. Here we are moving over to the final area that I decided that I really liked because it had basically everything I was looking for. I had a lot of these big dead trees over here. I still had a lot of these rocks for the foreground. I had this nice big pond or puddle right here and it really had everything I was looking for and as you can see, I just keep panning and going and going and ultimately I decided that this was going to be my location for the night.
Well, I'm really excited. It's blue hour now. Stars are starting to pop out. Orion's actually just peeking through now. I've tested the uh, the rented lens, the 24 to 70. The corners are pretty dang good at 2.8, so I might be a little crazy and do the tracked pano at 35 millimeter, which it's a little bit tighter in than I usually do. Um, but I, I'm really, I really just have no idea how I'm gonna approach this double blended pano. Um, but needless to say, I am so excited because I have not got a dark sky reading out here before. And for dark sky week, I'm very excited to finally see how dark it is out here. Uh, take a look at Orion over here. I really wanna get a nice shot during blue hour with Orion. There it is. <laughs> Zoom in. But you know what? Let's uh, focus. Oh, other way, other way. Yeah, baby. Looking good. What an awesome night. I finished off some epic shots of Orion over here with the reflection on the lake. Crystal clear reflections on in the uh, the little puddles here. And the Benro is pretty much done doing its thing. I've got my full uh, 240 degree Milky Way Arch Pano. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I got enough so I can overlap everything if need be. And uh, it's pretty dang dark here. Let's do an SQM reading. Ooh, 2153. One more. Twenty-one five zero. So this is definitely the third darkest places, third darkest place in Michigan that I have photographed so far that I have measured. I definitely know that there are a lot of darker places up in the UP, um, but I just I haven't gotten official readings. So, but this is definitely a fantastic place for the Lower Peninsula, and the darkest place in the Lower Peninsula that I have personally measured. Sleeping Bear comes very close. The at the lookout number 10, I got a 21.45. Alrighty. Here is the plan. I am going to leave the backup camera uh, over by the northern beach by my car. And I'm just gonna let it go because it looks like the northern lights might be out. It looks extremely small, but uh, I'm actually gonna put the new 24 to 70 on it. And I think I'm actually just gonna leave it at like maybe around 50 millimeter, let it go on a time lapse, and just let it go. So I'll pick that up around like 3.30. No, shoot, I can't do that. Ah. Never mind, can't do that. Cause I wanted to get the Milky Way rising. Better check what that is. Yeah, it's fine. I'll let it shoot for like two hours. I'll grab it after I take a nap and I will then move the backup camera over to where my main camera is, where the big puddles are and get the reflection of the Milky Way rising uh, after that. And I'll just let the time lapse pretty much go all night until morning when I'm done with everything. So yeah, and then I'll head home. So the 24 to 70 is really, really, really good. I did realize that lens rentals, they put a filter on their lens and it's just one of those clear protection filters that doesn't actually do anything. But I know in night photography, sometimes they can leave these weird rings everywhere. And I didn't realize it until after I took all my shots. So I really hope that 
There's no rings in my shots because that would really stink. All right. It is now about 2.20 in the morning and the Milky Way is starting to rise over here. Ro'ofuki is just now off of the horizon. Well, it's about, I don't know, five degrees off the horizon. Um, and Wilderness State Park is now the official second darkest reading I've ever gotten. It has continue, continuously gotten darker uh, as the night has gone on, and now I'm getting readings of 21.7 across the board. Uh, 21.71, 21.75, 7, and uh, you know what? Let's do it again and see what happens. Twenty one eight one. Like this is as dark as Quill Hill in Maine. And this is actually much darker here than I was expecting. So this is a very nice surprise. So let's get going. Well, and that's a wrap folks. What an absolutely amazing night in the second mo the second darkest location that I have ever measured. And what a variable of measurements. It seems like right at darkness, it still wasn't fully dark. I was getting readings of anywhere of 21.55. Uh, I think I even had one as low as 21.47. And then as soon as I woke up from my nap, it was 21.77, 21.7, uh, 21.81 was the darkest reading that I got. And man, this place is spectacular for night photography. If you have any sort of mount or even deep sky stuff, I mean, Milky Way stuff, whatever you want. I mean, this is such an amazing location. Just make sure you get your state park pass to come here. Uh, but I hope you enjoy these images. This 360 pano, I worked so freaking hard on. I can already tell you before even working on it that it's going to be a huge challenge for me to put this together. Tons of blue hour panos, uh, both blue hour after sunset and blue hour bef before sunrise. And I know I screwed up one big thing is that I did not take any panos at night during darkness. I should have because the reflections of the Milky Way in the ponds that were nearby, I, I totally spaced and didn't even think of it. So that is a bummer. But I hope you guys enjoy these images and you guys should check this place out too.